hey what's up guys welcome back to our youtube channel and welcome to this video tutorial so this is second video or part two of our java effects um, gpa crude and in this video we're going to continue working with our project and as you can see here we already have our basic project and then from the previous tutorial we already implemented um, several classes so for example the employees that java so this is auto, um, automatically generated for us by the persistence or I mean as you can probably remember we generated this class by using this option to generate entity classes from database and then we selected the employees table and uh, it generated this particular class now we're gonna use this class and we're going to populate our table by using this particular class okay we also um, added this particular method from the previous tutorial and as you can see here we have the setup table and then we specify the, the the first column which is id column but i remembered that we have added this from our main that fxml file right as you can see here we already have added our columns id first name last name right here so we can just use this so instead of defining another table column we can just grab this and replace this with the tc id that we have defined in our fxml file as you can see here so uh, the next step is there you go a uh, new table column and then we specify the type of data that we want to save in this particular table which is employees right and then of course the type of the information that we will try to collect in this particular column so id will be of type integer so we're just going to get rid of this for now and then in here we can define the text the minimum width and of course the set or I mean the cell value factory of this particular column so we're gonna use TCID by the way the, this stands for your table column ID and then we could set the text such as ID TCID again and then set minimum width for example we want this to be 100 and then TCID set set cell value factory okay and in here we're gonna define another or a new property value property value factory okay and then we're gonna specify the ID from our class employee so id okay and then of course we're going to do the same for the other columns so let's just import this right here and then this will be we'll just copy and paste this and another one for our first name and then our last name so this will be last name or I mean first name and then we're going to do the same for our last name right here so that will be last name okay I need to select the exact variable name so it should be string right because first name and last name should be string not integer okay and then this should be also last name I mean first name and this is last name okay and maybe the width of this is maybe 200 let's try that the same with the last name 200 okay so save and then after that one we're gonna um, have to configure it 
to be added into our table column but uh, we already did that so all we have to do right here is to add items to this particular table okay so in order for us to do that we're going to query the rat items or I mean not rat but employee items okay so all we have to do here is use the employee table there is it table view and then we're gonna set the items which is the observable list right here okay so table view and then set items and then we're gonna use the employees observable list okay so this will be the list of all the employees um, available in our database okay so I think for now uh, where is it services um, databases services and databases we're gonna use the crude GPA one connect uh, I think we do have here already the connection so we can see here the employees and then we can view the data so for now I think it's empty but we're, 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 we can insert um, data right here so let's try to insert data um, execute command so for example insert into uh, employees and then we're going to specify the values so for example the first one will be John and then the last name will be Doe John Doe okay let's try this run SQL and then we're getting an error column count doesn't match the column value because we're, we're going to define also the columns so first name and then last name and then specifying the values field ID so if you want to specify the ID also you can do that and in here we can just say one and then um, execute and as you can see here one row affected and refresh so there you go we do have a new um, record in our database okay and I think we can also insert record coming from here so for example we can say here Jane and then Doe okay click on OK um, specify also the ID and then click on OK okay so for now we, uh, we do have two records inside our database um, table employees and then of course we can get that values coming um, display it inside our table so let's close that for now and in here we're gonna um, you know add all the employees into our um, table so all we have to do is get all the values get all the records uh, from our database so what we can do next is to add another um, method right here so we're gonna say private void and then update employee list so basically this particular method 
um, will be filling the table okay so all we have to do here is define the query and then we're gonna use the NDP manager and then create name query okay and then all we have to do is find this um, name query so we're gonna use this employees find all basically because we're gonna get all the um, records inside our employees table so import pers uh, persistence query and then we can uh, assign a list here list equals to um, we're gonna name our list into results and then query that get result list okay so um, import list and then we're gonna check if the result results we're gonna check first for the employees if it is equal to null if it is equal to null then we're going to say employees equals fx collections this is just just to initialize our employees list so observable array list and then we're going to use our results Okay, results now otherwise we're going to say uh, employees that clear and then employees that add all and then we're gonna use still the results so I'm, j I'm going to quickly explain what we did here so basically we're just checking if the employees observable list is empty or null then we're going to initialize it with fx collections and then that observable array list using the results okay otherwise uh, if the employees um, list is not empty or null then we're going to clear it and then add the new updated list and we want this to be called before initializing the table so we can say here update employee list okay so this is getting all employees okay getting all employees so save this and then let's try to run our code so basically we just close this and then run our file so it should um, display but as you can see here uh, we're getting an empty table so for now let's just clean and build our project to see if the changes will be reflected otherwise uh, we will try to troubleshoot our program so run file and still we're getting this empty okay so let's try to troubleshoot our program first okay Let's go back to main controller and then we can check the results. For example, we can say here system that out of print line the result results that size. So we're just checking the size of the result of this particular query. Employees find all. So employees that find all is basically basically this particular query. So select um, 
E from employees. Okay. There you go. So save and then run our project. And then let's try to see the output. Mm -hmm. So it is not called, I think. Clean and build. Sometimes it takes uh, it takes us to you know clean and build the project just to see minor changes in our JavaFX project. So run file. Okay, so the result size is 2. So we're getting the size 2. So we know that this particular query is working. And then we're just going to have to um, figure out why this is not working so get result list alright guys I had to pause the video so that I could you know figure out what's wrong with the code and um, to save us time figure out uh, figuring out the problems so what I did was to update the setup table method and instead of using the set cell factory I actually have um, changed this to set cell value factory and um, new property value factory. Okay, and then I have to add this columns right here, table view, and then get columns, and then the method add call, um, adding all the columns that we have defined in here. And you don't need to um, use this. We can, you know, get rid of this. Um, I also added this particular class right here. So table view, um, the type of information that we're going to save is, of course, the employees. So I have to specify it there. And in my main.fxml file, I have um, re uh, removed all the columns. So that's why uh, I'm telling you that you could, you know, get rid of the declaration of all the columns right here because we're gonna um, uh, initialize it inside our setup table so defining a new column for IT first name and the last name so if we try to run this now it should work and I only have to change few text here because currently it say uh, it says ID for all the columns which is not the correct terms because we're gonna use first name here and last name for this particular column so go to uh, main controller and instead of using ID we should be using here first name and same with the third column it should be um, last name and of course maybe the size of this is a bit wide so we can change this into 50 and then save and then clean and build our project and wait for a few seconds and then run file and it should you know be good now as we are seeing the records coming from our database so we have three columns, the ID, the first name, and then the last name. And as you can see here, these um, records are coming from our MySQL database. So in the next tutorial, guys, we're going to be using this form to actually save all the information, the ID, the first name, last name, and save it into our MySQL database. So thank you for watching, guys, and I hope to see you in the next video.